All right, I am set, ready to rock and roll here. I, if, if you hear any background noise, I'm in the gym. It's late night. Uh, I'm recording this on a Tuesday night, voting night. And um, I am headed to the Bahamas tomorrow with the family. So I have been like a man possessed, getting as much work done as I can um, before I go on my trip. And the last thing I've got to do is record this podcast, which I'm really excited about. And it's going to be a doozy. And there was part of me that wanted to um, just do like a real quick short one. And it's like, oh, I'll just give him like a 10 minute one. And then I was just like, no, it's like everything I do, everything I do, I got to, I got to put out my best. I got to put out my best, even if I'm short on time, even if I'm short on energy. Um, So I'm here, it's late night. Um, So if you hear a a lot of like herd of buffalo, um, there's a baseball academy that's up uh, above me and they do like classes at night and every once in a while you can hear them like sprinting and running uh, plus we have G- classes going on at GFP so um, I'm in the back room uh, g- getting after it myself in the back um, I-, I wanted to bring you a recap today of the SPF mastermind meeting we had an incredible meeting we actually did it at the gym for the first time and it was, a, it was a really, really awesome event and had so much uh, fun. We had uh, uh, over 100 totals. We had, I think, about 60 or 65 in person. And then we had uh, about 40 on, uh, on Zoom. So it, it was a hybrid event, but uh, over 100 people in attendance watching. And it's, it's pretty nuts um, to really look at the SPF Mastermind and see how far it came. I mean, literally our first meeting, we had eight people sitting around in a small boardroom and, and here we are now a hundred strong from gym owners all over the world. So uh, it was, um, it's I'm more than grateful to run these events and um, super excited today to share with you the recap. And I know there's going to be a lot of, of takeaways for you. And obviously I'm not going to go, if I tried to go through uh, the entire, um, the entire mastermind, uh, we, we'd be here all night long. So, but what I want to do is kind of bring you the highlights. And one of the, the most challenging parts uh, in terms of running a mastermind is having to um, really focus on running the event, but also not being as focused on the other speakers as I possibly can. Because Hey, there's people coming asking questions. I'm making sure we actually had the gym at GFP and there was a toilet that broke and all of a sudden there's this little beeping that's going off. So it's like, and I told them, it's like, never again will I do this uh, at the gym. Um, but uh, they, the team did a great job of turning the uh, facility into a really awesome uh, venue. So everything looked great, but there was some functionality with the facility that uh, didn't go as, as, as planned. But um, and what that does is that, that it, it, it kind of distracts me a little bit from actually listening to some of the really, really awesome speakers we had. So I'm pretty much going to go from start to finish. Um, what were the things, um, the big takeaways, and what were the lessons um, that we learned? Here's the first one, and I'm, I'm, I, I'm going to pretty much go really, um, I, I'm going to go as slow and as fast as I possibly can. So. The day before, I was playing golf. And I'm not a golfer. My cousin's a really good golfer. He took me to his ritzy country club the day before so I could just get my head out of it and relax. And um, I'm you know, trying to hit the ball, and I'm muscling it, and I'm all tight. And you know, um, he's giving me all these different tips on what I should do you know, to, uh, to hit the ball better. And like nothing's working. He's pulling out the towel. He's pulling out the rope. He's pulling out the special sticks. Um, nothing's working. I'm like getting worse as I go along. And he says something weird. He goes, you know what, dude? Um, he's like, just, just, you know, who's really good at golf. He's like the stoners. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, the stoners, the guy that smoked pot all the time. Remember that guy that went to high school with, they just smoked weed all the time. He's really good at golf because he just steps up, gets to the tee and just smashes the ball. And I'm like, that was it. And as soon as he said that, I started hitting the ball better because I did one thing and one thing only. I relaxed. 
And that's exactly what a stoner is. They're relaxed. They don't give a shit what's going on. They're just they're chilling. They're hanging out. Right? Everything's cool. Everything's relaxed. Here I am trying to grip the grip the uh, the what is it called <laughs> club. I'm trying to grip the club super hard, right? And I'm trying to muscle it and trying to you know, use all the, the the lifting I've been doing for the last you know 40 years to 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 hit the ball harder. And all I needed to do was take a breath and relax. And then I started smashing the ball. Well, I wouldn't say smashing, but I started hitting the ball better, right? And one of my first lessons was uh, a term called lowest heart rate in the room. And as a gym owner and as the leader of your organization, it's really important for you to have the lowest heart rate in the room. And when you have the lowest heart rate in the room, you are gonna be in a much better position to be able to make decisions. When your heart rate is high, what you'll tend to do is you'll tend to react. And ideally, what you really want to do is respond. And that is what's going to help us make better decisions. And there was, um, there's nothing more important as a leader to be able to make good decisions. And so one of my points in the opening ceremonies was learn lowest heart rate. Train yourself to relax when challenging stuff comes up. Because if you freak out, there's never a good time to freak out, right? There's never a good time to freak out. And if you can learn to control your heart rate, when challenges and stuff comes up, you're gonna make better decisions. Plus, what's gonna happen also is everyone around you is going to be relaxed, right? Think about like your parents. Your parents freak out, the kids are gonna freak out. It's just kind of what happens, right? So one of the biggest leadership lessons that was taught um, was learn lowest heart rate. Because when you learn lowest heart rate, you relax your body even when times are stressed and times are tough, and you will end up making uh, better decisions. And I showed a slide of Tim Duncan and, um, and Shaq. And Shaq, there's a quote from Shaq's book, and he basically said the San Antonio Spurs won because of Tim Duncan, a guy I could never break. And he starts saying, I could talk trash to Patrick Ewing, I got in David Robinson's face, I could get Alonzo Mourning off his game. But when I went at Tim Duncan, he looked at me like he was bored. And Tim Duncan probably mastered lowest heart rate. He didn't really react to things. He just kept on playing with that straight face. So the first lesson that I taught in Mastermind is learn lowest heart rate and this is also great advice as a parent you want to parent your kids better don't freak out don't freak out learn lowest heart rate before you get and before you get to that situation relax your relax your body relax your heart relax everything and you're going to make a better decision okay so that was um kind of my now there was a lot more that i talked about in the intro but that's like a little piece of it it's almost like a little nugget um, for you to take away if you're taking notes at home. So just practice lowest heart rate. When stressful time comes up, keep your heart rate as low as you possibly can. Okay, so the next presentation I did um, was called Seven Business Screws That Need to Be Tightened Yesterday. And obviously I talked about the you know, recession, but I didn't you know, fear monger um, anybody into this, but I, I, did, I did talk about it and I did uh, mention it because here's the thing it's reality right it's, it's kind of like what we're in now and that's what we're looking forward to um, and so this presentation was all about what is everyone currently doing and the cool thing is you're listening to this as a gym owner and and everything that I talk about today um, in terms of these presentations the few of the seven that I'll mention um, all of these um, you're doing right now and so when a screw needs to be tightened, the screw's already in there. So the, the, the main crux of it is already there. All you need to do is take the drill and tighten the screw. So it's not gonna take a ton of energy, it's not gonna take a ton of effort, but the screw definitely needs to be tightened. And if the screw doesn't get tightened, it's gonna fall out and a lot of other stuff is gonna break loose. So that was uh, the next presentation. Seven business screws that need to be tightened. Here was um, the first screw. Um, and this, we had a lot of fun with this one, um, but the first screw 
was called Stock the Pond. And I basically talk about that the lack of success in marketing can simply be traced back to not enough fish in the pond, right? Um, you just don't have enough people to draw from. You're not doing a good enough job with lead generation. You're bitching about Facebook and the cost per lead being too high or you, Facebook doesn't work or community events don't work or joint venture doesn't work. Instead of trying to figure it out and always understanding that you always need to be marketing. And I don't care if you're full, I don't care if you're, you're totally booked out, which most people are not, but you should always be marketing. And the reality of it is if you look at your list, right? I'm talking about your list as the pond, right? If you can continue to bring new people onto your list, your email list, your list of phone numbers, the, there's gonna be a greater likelihood just from a percentage basis, because a certain percentage of people on your list will become buyers. And if you increase that number of the people on your list, you will, um, you'll be more successful. So I talked about lead generation must be a priority. Now everyone here is doing some form of lead generation. At least I hope you're doing it, right? So, but I talked about it. It's like your effort in the face of a recession, a screw that needs to be tightened, needs to be taken up a notch. And I went through um, six different really specific um, lead generation strategies. Um, but, but I also talked about different things to do. So I'll just mention them here. I talked about Facebook ads. I talked about Google My Business and an optimized website. I talked about community events, so consistent social media, sponsorships, and joint ventures. Right? But what I didn't talk about was getting more specific. What I, what, what I did talk about um, was getting more specific with what types of things you're using, right? In, in fishing terms, I talk about stock the pond. So technically we're talking about fish, right? And don't, I mean, your clients aren't fish, but they're, we're just using it as an example, right? But um, what is the bait, right? What is the bait that's going on the hook to catch the fish, right? Um, so the ones that are in your pond, how are you gonna catch those fish? Well, you need really good lead generation magnets. And I went over some really different things. Some go, a lot of times we're like problem solving reports. And I've even taught this, right? Or, or it's like, all right, what's their problem? Their problem is lose weight and lose fat. And you gotta write a seven page report on the seven best ways to, for adults to burn body fat. Well, I'm here to tell you, that shit doesn't work very well. And I've had that same report on my website for a long time and no one picks it. Everyone just picks the free stuff, the free training session that I have on the website. And maybe once in a while someone will opt in. But sometimes we've been programmed to follow what is the best type of marketing. All right, you gotta do the pain point reports. And honestly, I'm telling you right now, they don't work that well. And the reality is one of the things I taught, and this is one of the things I'm putting together, um, a, a template for this, but some basic like a membership and pricing guide. Like at some point people just wanna know what the hell you do and what it costs, right? And maybe that's what you use as the lead magnet. So I went into a bunch of different lead generation magnets and things that you can use. So that was one of the first ones was stock the pond. You gotta have a better focus on lead generation. And the other point of this is, is that I talked about is lead generation is important for now and probably more important for later. Only a certain percentage of people are gonna buy right away. A larger percentage of people are gonna buy down the road. But you always need to be stocking the pond with leads because they aren't gonna buy right away and they are gonna buy down the road. And you need strategies in place to make that happen. Okay. Um, the, the second one, well, the third one, I'll skip the second one, um, was talking about changing your approach to hiring and I obviously I own four companies so we are hiring all the time and we have had to change our approach the first thing we've had to do is really get good at it and to study it and to learn what the hell's going on in in hiring these days and it's no longer um, put an ad up on indeed right and then all of a sudden expect um, you to get 17 really good resumes from trainers and all of a sudden you pick the best one. That ain't happening these days, all right? And if anything, it's costing you a crap ton more money to get those 17 resumes if you get those 17 resumes. 
So the, 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 one of the other screws that need to be tightened was everyone's hiring, but you really need to change your approach to hiring. The first thing you need to do is make sure you're embracing reality and, and, and just understanding that it is different than it used to be. And that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, you know, higher, um, what is it? Higher, slow, fire, fast. Yeah, uh, not really, not anymore. Um, you got to hire fast and fire fast. We got to hire fast. We got to get people in the door. We got to hire them fast. You still follow the same principles, but you got to move the pace. All right. And then you get them in the door. And if they work great, if they don't, boom, you got to move on. Um, but the reality of this is it's just a different way and a different way that you got to respond and change your approach um, to hiring. Um, the, the other screw that needed to be tightened was, and here's the thing, my, my guys have heard me say this till I'm blue in the face, was uh, about raising prices. I talk about it all the time, all the time. There's a bump, someone just, maybe a kid just fell up there. Um, but I, I kind of got into, you know, why, right? Because it's like, it's easy for me to just, yeah, raise your prices, raise your prices, raise your prices, right? Um, but why? And the reason is we fear conflict. We fear, you know, other people that are going to think we're greedy. We feel people are going to lose everybody. Um, we feel that we'll price ourselves out of the market and no one will come anymore. We fear all these things. It's just a fear-based thing. And most of the stuff about pricing is in our head. And I went through an exercise um, that was just a math, a simple basic math exercise um, that went through you know, if you raise your price to this and you lost X amount of clients from the price raise, where would you be? And I think a lot of people got a big relief of anxiety about raising prices when I kind of showed them the, the math and showed them the numbers. Um, so if you're listening to this and you need to raise your prices, um, probably something to consider. And I, and I gave this example, everyone else was raising their prices and you know who raised your prices? Freaking Starbucks. I get a small coffee and the small coffee costs me like almost four dollars. Like it is ridiculous that a small coffee could cost that much money. Um, it's, 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 it's mind boggling, right? It's, it's absolutely mind boggling, but hey, Starbucks is doing it, they're charging it, and I don't see any shortness of lines at the Starbucks. All right, I gotta move here. So that was a couple of the seven business screws um, that need to be tightened. Um, the next presentation I talked about was um, the three biggest money-making levers you and only you could pull. The theme of the mastermind was called ULLC. And what um, the, the whole premise of it was making the owner more, a more effective person. And so this presentation was all about what are you spending your time on? And I unpacked the three biggest money-making levers you and only you can pull as a gym owner. And I started to unpack these skills. And these are some of the same skills I've developed over the years. And I think that the three could be very, very helpful for you. Um, but the first thing I talked about was to start valuing your time more um, and developing a disdain, which means the feeling that something is unworthy of notice or intense dislike. Um, a disdain of, um, of wasting time. You have to start prioritizing your time and making sure that you're getting max value from the time uh, that you are spending, okay? I went through uh, the six biggest movers in time management, don't really have time um, to go. I went through something called your Kias, which are your key impact areas, and basically those Kias are the things you do on a weekly basis that have the most direct impact on the success of your business. So it's not about doing a lot of stuff. It's about doing things on your, putting things on your calendar that have a direct impact on the success of your business. So for me in my business, recording this podcast is a really big deal. That's why I'm like here late at night. Cause I was like, I'm not going to not do this because I know that this is going to be listened to by thousands of gym owners that are potentially interested in joining the SPF mastermind. I can't, I can't not do this. I can't skip this. Right. So it's because it's something I do that has a direct impact 
on the success of my business. So as a gym owner, you have those too, right? And you got to figure out and start to prioritize your day and prioritize your time around these things that have the biggest impact. It's not, it's no longer about working long, hard hours. That's bullshit. All right. That is just stupid. You should be working on the right stuff, on the things that have the biggest impact on your business. And I was taught this very early on is I said, Vince, and I don't even remember who taught me. It just was ingrained in my mind, but you need to learn two things and you need to get really, really good at these two things. And the two things were marketing and leadership, marketing and leadership, marketing and leadership, marketing and leadership. You need to master marketing and you need to master leadership. And if you master marketing and you master leadership, you'll never want for anything. And I have doubled down on those two skills. And I feel like the two uh, skills within um, marketing are, are copywriting um, and, and speaking. Those are the kind of the two skills within marketing. You can always get someone to run Facebook ads. You can always get someone to kind of post on social for you. But for actually someone to write words that sell is, is challenging and, 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 and expensive. Um, and hey, who's going to go out and do your public speaking events for you? Um, nobody. Right, you, that's on you. You're gonna have to do that. So um, that that was really the the crux of this part of the presentation was me just going all in on teaching them about marketing and leadership and marketing and leadership and with marketing, specifically writing, copywriting, and um, specifically speaking. Um, and I really went and un unpacked. Um, and I'm not talking about speaking like for perform better. And, you know, like the stuff that I do to grow my consulting company, I'm talking about the stuff I did to grow my gym to seven figures in the first five years. That's the stuff that I did where I went out and I did the mini workshops and I went to the church groups and I went to the PTA and I, and I got in the boardroom of the local PAL athletic leagues and stuff like that. And I did a little pitch on a presentation. Like that's the stuff that got my business off the ground. Right? And I really feel like you listening to this, if you can start speaking more and getting out in your community, man, that's going to be huge. And I did um, uh, promote uh, a, a thing I have coming up. Basically, it's called a local sp public speaking course. Uh, well, it's a two-day workshop that I'm teaching. And it's all about public speaking in the local market, right? Finding these local businesses, these local uh, groups and organizations where you could come in and speak both online and offline and, and going in and start promoting your business. So it's not about making you the next speaker on the Perform Better Tour. It's not about um, you becoming a national celebrity and speaking all over the world or anything like that. It is about you growing your gym through speaking. So that is something I, I um, will be doing. I think it's January 26th and 27th um, that we'll be doing. I think we do have a couple spots uh, for that workshop. It's going to be a real small workshop, but um, we do have a couple spots. So just uh, email me, vince at gabrielfitness.com, and um, we'll give you all the instructions on how to register and everything like that. So um, I went through that and then we had uh, something very interesting happen. And uh, this is going to be a longer podcast um, than I thought. And, and here's why um, I'm, I'm dodging going home right now because Vanessa and that girls are all cleaning the house to get make sure the house gets clean before we leave uh, to go to the Bahamas. And I'm just like, oh, I'm going to stay here and record a podcast. I'm going to do the work. I'm going to do the work that's most important. OK, uh, as I hide. Um, but it's fun. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you're benefiting from my, my hiding. Um, so we went through three things and then, um, I have, my daughter has been speaking at, um, uh, most of the masterminds in the last few, um, in the last few, uh, year, uh, last, really just the last year. I think she spoke at the last four masterminds and she's 10 years old. And so I work with her and help her prepare and she uses these little note cards and she was doing a presentation and she got up there in front of a hundred people and she's done them before. Right. And she did well the last time she's done it. And, um, she, she gets up there and she's doing good in the beginning. And all of a sudden she starts fumbling with her cards and, um, she drops the cards 
like all over the floor. And the, the cards like go everywhere and they scatter. And I'm like, oh shit. And I knew she did not know the, it cold. Like she didn't really know it. She needed the card and she was reading. She's 10 years old and speaking in front of 100 people. So she needed the cards. And she starts looking and she can't find the card. And I'm just like, shit. And we have a rule in our house that we do not do anything for our kids that they can do themselves. Now, this was cutting it really close, right? Like I'm talking about like if they ask us to open a jar for them, we're like, nope, keep trying until you do. This is like I'm in front of 100 people. I just dropped all my cards and I'm standing there against a wall. And it's just like I'm having goosebumps even talking about this right now. But I'm standing there against a wall and there's something like I think it was God. He held me up against the wall and he was like saying, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. Let her figure it out. And Vanessa, my wife, is on the other side of the room. And she's like, the exact same thing happened to her. There was something in us both that did not get up there. And every ounce of my being wanted to go and grab the right car for her and hand it to her and be like, all right, go. And everyone else in the room is like thinking the exact same thing of like, I want to go help her. I want to go help her. I want to go. And she ended up freaking figuring it out. Like she found the card somehow, I don't know, I think she even went without the card um, and, and she ended up finishing the presentation. And there was a point in time where you could tell she was about to crack. Like she was, she was about to run off the stage or start crying or run over to me and um, something happened where she didn't. And I was just like, I was like, I can't believe that. And it was like the highlight of the weekend. It was crazy. It was crazy. People were like crying, like like Jim, grown ass Jim, Jim Smith from from Diesel and the the founder of CPBS. He was there. He's a good friend of mine, and I invited him to come. And he was just hanging out. He came up to me. and He's bawling, like tears are just squirting off his face. He's like, oh, that was amazing. I can't believe it. Uh, but it was a it was a really cool uh, it was a really cool thing that happened um, one of the one of the highlights of my parenting uh, careers was uh, was that and um, you know it was cool because the the there's a lot of uh, uh, parents in the SPF mastermind there's a lot of people that are raising kids that are trying to work hard to raise kids and trying to work hard to grow a business at the same time and it's not easy. And um, they, a lot of people mentioned the, the, what Vanessa and I did. A lot of people mentioned that, you know, we didn't go. We didn't go do it for her. We let her figure it out um, for herself. And, you know, it was a really good lesson. Uh, and, again, I didn't plan this. I didn't, uh, you know, anything, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm doing the best I can as a dad. I'm not nearly a perfect dad, not no way. Um, but it, it, was a, it was a really, really cool uh, moment. Um, after that, we had a guy named George McGuire, who's a former SPF Mastermind Member of the Year. George has an incredible gym out in Kent, Washington, one of the best gym owners um, I've ever been around and one of the nicest people on the, on the planet. But he did an amazing presentation um, all about retention. And he had a challenger. He was, you know, his retention uh, wasn't... Uh, going that well and what he did was he put together a plan and just like turned the entire thing around like took his attrition from like 10 percent, which is really high all the way down to like three percent through doing very very specific things and really just spending a ton of time on it and not allowing this to become a problem so he taught a ton of really cool tactical things about what you can do if your retention is down um, how often to follow up with people? What do you do when people stop showing up and everything like that? So George McGuire did a phenomenal job of talking about retention, and tons of people got uh, so many huge takeaways um, from that presentation. Uh, the second one was Connor Flayhide, and Connor has uh, a very big gym um, called Flayhives in Chicago, but he's also starting these new mini gyms called uh, Flexes, and they're all over the, the Chicago. He's got three open right now. And, you know, when you talk about killing it, like this guy is absolutely killing it right now. And, and he talked about simplification. He, and, and, you know, the cool thing was he, he's, uh, he talked about his one gym, and his one gym, his big gym, his, his mothership, they train athletes and they train adults. And he, like, he didn't hide the fact that it was like a big animal. 
that took a lot of energy, that took a lot of payroll, that you know was a challenge. There's the there's the herd again. Um, that took a lot, and he's like, I'm not going to do that with my next venture. I'm not going to try to scale complexity. And so he kept his one gym as is, and he says, I'm just going to keep this over here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the best thing I'm doing, which was, in his case, small group personal training, groups of six for adults, and I'm going to open up these little gyms that can hold about 100 to 150 people. And once it gets to 150 people, I'm going to open up another one, and I'm not going to try and add athletes. I'm not going to do anything else except train adults in small groups of six and in, in these general areas. And it was a brilliant, brilliant presentation. He talked about how to simplify um, your business and the margins on the things that he's doing is just absolutely outstanding. Um, he's a tremendous gym owner that did a phenomenal job speaking. I mean, there was countless questions. I mean, Connor barely finished his presentation because he got so many questions from people that were so interested in the things that, that he was doing. Um, after Connor spoke, we had a really cool thing where we had the, what's called the, every um, November, we give away the SPF Mastermind Member of the Year Award, which is called the Maven Award. And uh, it was between uh, two unbelievable gym owners, one Dr. John Doherty and two Devin Gage. And Devin Gage has a gym in West Pe uh, Westchester, PA, and Dr. John Doherty has a, has a gym out in, in Texas. And both of them have had phenomenal years, and we kind of put this whole thing together where we did this big interview, and they got to share how much revenue and how much profit they've grown by, and it's just like they just... It was a, a very, very well done thing. Both of them got about a half hour in front of the room um, and, and gave their uh, pitch on why they should feel they should be picked as the SPF Mastermind Member of the Year Award. Both were phenomenal. Uh, I'm going to be having both of them on the podcast uh, pretty soon, which you'll hear from both of them. And, um, but uh, the winner um, ended up being uh, Devin Gage. It was a very, very close race. But uh, it was really cool. But I'm going to have both of them on the podcast to, uh, to kind of talk about everything that happened and talk about, you know, what went into their amazing year that they had. There's a lot of heavy hitters in the SPF Mastermind, a lot of really good gym owners. Um, but those were the top two, um, and, and, and they did phenomenal. And that was the end of day one. And after day one, we went and... Uh, we went to my house and we had like a barbecue and or actually it wasn't a barbecue we had mexican food so we had mexican food catered and everyone kind of went to my house and vanessa um uh, made everyone go out in on our yard and record a TikTok, and it was we just had a good time dancing and drinking and having fun and it was really a, a good a good time and then we came back the next day and we had a full day plan this was like it was a really, really, really awesome day too. Um, a lot of times what we do is, you know, we, we have, you know, the big keynotes on day one, um, and then day two is a, lot, a couple members from my staff and things like that. But I will tell you this, day two, this was the best day two we've ever had in the history, in the history of the SPF Mastermind. It was phenomenal. Uh, it all started with a guy named Ben Stocks, who is our head of ad management at KISS Marketing. And Ben did a phenomenal presentation all about marketing um, on, uh, online. And uh, the thing I love about Ben is Ben is, you know, he, he's, he's, he's a geek, right? He's a tech geek, right? He knows all these prop platforms. He knows everything that, that to do with Facebook. He knows everything to do with Instagram. Um, but the cool thing about Ben is he understands and gets marketing. Right. He studies all the old you know, guys, the Halberts, the Kennedys of the world, and, and he's deep into that world. So he's a tech guy like Will um, that understands marketing, and he's doing a phenomenal job uh, for us over at Agency. And, and he shared some game changers, some absolute game changers. Um, he did this one thing where he talked about engagement. And he, he talked about the uh, doing what's called a pizza contest. And he said something along the lines of put an ad up um, and basically is, hey, who's got better pizza, Joe's pizza or John's pizza? And you have your community vote. 
and the whole thing is about and driving engagement and getting people interested and getting people you know thinking of you and everything like that so ben uh, blew the doors off a lot of really big you know, we do big takeaways at the end of each day and a lot of the big takeaways were uh, from Ben. Uh, next up was Tom Leonardis. Tom is my head of sales and my head recruiter for FBU. And he, I asked him to come on and do a presentation titled how to, I don't remember exactly the title, but how to hire new trainers in the most effed up job market in the, in the history of the world. And uh, he did, he's been doing a, a, a huge, huge venture, a huge job into studying hiring um, in the new economy. He's, he's going all in on things like Jazz HR and LinkedIn, and he's learning everything he needs to learn to help our mastermind get better at hiring. So he's done a phenomenal job there. Um, he shared some really good things about LinkedIn, um, some really awesome things about how to structure your job ads, what to say, what to offer, and everything like that. And so there was a full-on masterclass all on hiring and he did a, a really really nice job the last of the morning was kyle newell and kyle did um, everything about being your own authentic self and the story of kyle is you know kyle's a you know he beats to his own drum he's been a member of ours since the very beginning he's been a coaching client of mine for almost a decade and he is one of the most interesting he's, he's known as the most interesting man in the world um, but the story of Kyle is, um, hey, he, during COVID, he opened his gym, you know, before the guys down in South Jersey did it. Um, I think they ended up doing it before him, but I think Kyle was brewing it well before them. But, um, you know, he, he talked about, you know, being your own authentic self and not trying to be like other people and not and, and finding what makes you tick and what's going to make you special and you unique. And I asked Kyle to talk about that because there's no one that's done that uh, better than him. So it was, a, it was a phenomenal presentation. One of the biggest takeaways I had um, was Kyle talking about like your uniform and what you wear. And Kyle got up there and he, and, and, and he basically has this huge beard, right? And that's his thing, right? He's known for the beard, um, but he's also known for this special haircut, right, that he's got. And he's known for, he had, he had like a World War II, or uh, World War II or Vietnam, I think it was World War II, World War II uh, shirt on that his grandfather gave him. And he just, he just, he, he looks so different than anyone else, right? But it's how he stands out. And he was teaching the group on how to create your own uniform or your own personality, whether it's, do you wear a certain color shirt, right? Do you wear a certain hat? Do you, do you have a certain kind of facial hair? Are there certain characteristics that you develop about yourself and you create this character that steps you apart uh, for every other gym owner in your community so you can become uh, more known? So it was, it was a phenomenal presentation. He did a, a wonderful job, tons of really good questions uh, from his presentation as well. Um, the afternoon was back to me, and that's when I uh, led everyone through an exercise of how to create their one-year plan. So I led everyone through an exercise for, they left that day with a one sheet of paper for everything they wanted to accomplish by this time next year. And then we also created their quarterly goals for what were the goals they wanted to achieve by the next meeting. And then I finished with some personal development stuff, and everyone knows that you know, I put a lot of energy and effort into raising my kids as good as I can. But, um, hey, all the things that I'm trying to instill in my kids are also just good personal development lessons. Um, so when I, I went through, I think I did like 15 or 16 lessons um, on, on personal development and essentially little things, or really big things, um, that I wanted my kids um, to, to live. Um, one of, I'll give you a couple of them. One of them was take 100% responsibility for yourself. I feel like these days, some people are very quick to pass the buck, right? They're quick to blame. They want to blame the economy and they want to blame the weather and they want to blame this and blame that. And you really get nowhere from that. You really get nowhere from that. And I, want, I don't want my son and my daughters to have any 
um, blame on anyone else except taking full responsibility of where they are in their life, right? That's on, that's on them. They got to decide, you know, what they're going to do in their life. Now, obviously, we're supporting them and helping them right now as kids, but I'm trying to teach them that at a very young age. And the lesson I always talk about is my son, Joey, and we, we do it with little things, right? We're not like, I don't like say, go, go to the grocery store and get your own food. Like we do that for them, right? But it's my son, uh, is, it's his job to turn his light off. Right? He, can, he can go and flip that switch. Like that's, there's no reason why his mommy needs to do that. There's no reason why I need to do that. That is something he is 100% capable of doing. And so we have this thing going on where it's always like, if he doesn't turn his light off, even if he's across the, 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 the street at the neighborhoods, I yell at the window, Joey, you'll never believe what happened. You left the light on again, buddy. And he'll come running back and come in, in the house, turn his light off, and because he's responsible um, for that. Uh, one of the ones that really hit home, uh, and this was like a little one that I talked about, was carry cash. And I told everyone, carry $500 cash in your wallet at all times. And maybe you listening to this, you'll start to do it too. But I was like, there's a different mindset you have when you have cash. And I told them, even if you have 600 bucks in the bank, put 500 bucks in cash and put it in your wallet. There's a mindset that comes with it and you'll feel more confident and you'll feel more wealthy when you have that cash on, on your person um, for that. Um, there are so many more and uh, you know, I don't go on and on to make this you know, a super long podcast. Um, but it was a really, really awesome event. We had such a great time. And um, if you're listening to this still, um, obviously you may be a fan and want to, you know, join us at a meeting and try it. And what I, I, I welcome you to join us at the next one. And the next one will be on March 11th and 12th. Um, I think March 11th and 12th. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Um, sorry, March 10th and 11th. March 10th and 11th um, in Orlando, Florida. So our next meeting is March 11th, the 10th and 11th in Orlando, Florida, right at Disney Springs. It's going to be amazing. Uh, we've got speakers already lined up. I already know what the focus is going to be. I can't give that out yet. Um, but if you would like to join us at the next meeting, we, we have... Um, we usually take five to seven gym owners that are not in the mastermind that are interested to, um, to do what's called guest, to come on a guest pass. Right? And a guest pass is basically you're coming as a guest. Um, there's a small fee to, to buy the guest pass, but nothing crazy. And essentially what we're looking for is gym owners that are good fits for the mastermind that may be interested in joining, but they want to see what a meeting is like and they want to meet people and make sure, you know, I'm not a crazy person and everything like that. Um, so if you're listening to this at this point, we are 40, you know, 43 minutes into this podcast. If you are still listening to this and you're not in the SPF mastermind, uh, you must be super interested uh, if you've gone this far. Um, and I welcome you to join us on March 10th and 11th in Orlando, Florida. Um, it's going to be amazing. So you should. So here's your, what to do. Um, just go... Uh, Type, send an email to hello at vincegabriel.com. Hello at vincegabriel.com. And just put March Mastermind in the subject line. And my team will get back to you and we'll uh, reach out with all the details and probably um, hopefully sign you up and see you in um, March uh, to come to the Mastermind. So. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, it gives me a, a cool uh, uh, time to debrief, you know, the mastermind, but also to share some of the nuggets that were learned uh, along uh, the way. So if you want more information on attending our March mastermind meeting on March 10th and 11th, just go ahead and send an email to hello at vincegabriel.com and put March Mastermind in the subject line and my team will get back to you. Hopefully this was helpful, enjoyable, informative, instructive, and the noise of the herd of buffalo above me and the bell ringing and the trainers yelling. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but uh, I certainly can hear it. Uh, didn't bother you and you still got some value from the podcast. And uh, I am off. I am off the grid for a while. Uh, going to the Bahamas with the family. Then we're going to California after that. 
um, for Thanksgiving. So I'm doing a lot of traveling for pleasure here in uh, November. Um, but someone told me it's a well-deserved break after preparing the last mastermind. So very exciting stuff. A lot of awesome things flying around in this group. I really hope you will join us at the next one, March 10th and 11th in the Orlando, Florida area. Uh, going to be very exciting. I will see you on the next episode. Thank you so much.